Hey, I'm Hannah Barnes from Canon Sham Racing Team and welcome to the Vox Women Cycling Show. Coming up in this month's show, we see the new European Champions of the Road Race and Time Trial crowned. We head to Great Britain to see how their women's road series is expanding. We meet Olympic champion Kristen Armstrong in her new role. But first, we head to France and La Course. Today is a special race, uh, but it's true that after 10 days of Giro, I'm a little bit uh, tired, but I think it's a really good uh, and nice race, and I raced yest uh, last year, and I will try to do the, my best. Really excited because this is such a big race, um, and we'll have live coverage, you know, all around the world, so, I mean, we're super, super excited, and lots of climbing, so, for mountain goats, it's good if you have a hard race and begin, and uh, it should be great when there is a group uh, up front, and then uh, yeah, may have uh, maybe one to ride this in should be uh, awesome, of course. Yeah, I think it's going to be a hard race with four climbs in it. Uh, yeah, and especially the, the last two uh, long ones. I think already on the yeah on the third uh, the long one, the attacks. Uh, gonna start. <laughs> Do you know what to expect? It's going to be a tough day out there. Um, it's very interesting to have you know, a hard climb, a technical descent and immediately into another climb. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's a, it's a cool course and I think it will be exciting today. The peloton lined up in Annecy ahead of 118 kilometers of racing across the fearsome alpine climbs to Le Grand Bonal. The weather was beautiful. World champion Chantal Black rode near the front together with her Bowles Dolman's teammates. Leah Thomas of United Healthcare broke away, eventually being caught by Cecily Utrib Ludwig. The Dane set a furious pace on the Col de la Colombière. Behind her, the attacks started to happen to try to bring her back. Amanda Spratt was active at the front. Last year's winner, Annemiege van Vleuten, a recent winner of the Giro Rosa as well, looked stronger and stronger as the race progressed. Lucinda Brand worked hard to ride to the chasing trio of Anna van der Breggen, Ashley Moorman Passio and Annemiege van Vleuten. In sight of the top of the final climb, Ludwig was being reeled in by the chasers. Moorman Passio was in a great position to follow. She was caught, but the young Danish rider had produced an inspiring display of mountain climbing. Then her teammate Moorman Passio attacked. But she was put into difficulty by Anna van der Breggen, who crested the top of the mountain first. Second was van Vleuten, third Moorman Passio. On the 15-kilometre descent, the Olympic champion gave everything. Van Vleuten tried all she could to stay in contact, but the gap remained. Ashley Moorman Passio raced hard in third place, but couldn't match the tempo of Van der Breggen and Van Vleuten. Under the flam rouge, Van Vleuten wasn't giving up, despite the gap still being good. In the final few metres, van der Breggen's legs seemed to falter. Van Vleuten sensed a glimmer of hope and drove on. Within the final 50 metres, she somehow caught van der Breggen. It was one of the most incredible finishes of a bike race ever seen, as van Vleuten defended her La Course title. Third was Ashley Moorman Passio of Savela Bigla. Elation for van Vleuten, despair for van der Breggen. The replay showing just how close the Dutch woman came to victory. Four 
fourth place went to Cecily Uptrud Ludwig, and she loved the race. I had an infection in my wisdom tooth and we pulled it out and ever since my wisdom tooth was pulled out it got better day by day. So if you ever have problems with it, bad legs, you know, pull your wisdom tooth out because it's crazy how how much such a little tooth can affect your performance. I'm so happy. And you know, we just showed how good women's cycling is. I mean, this is crazy. People out there should watch more women cycling, please. <laughs> Such a good team performance, you know, and having Lotte in the breakaway, <laughs> sneaking up there, you know, in the climb, and she's a sprinter. <laughs> oh my God, what a perfect day. You know, seriously. Will you, will you ever forget this? No, 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 no. This is uh, one of the best days of my life, and for sure I'm gonna enjoy champagne. Chocolate, pizza, oh my god, vacation is coming now. <laughs> Last year was super nice, but I think also this was this was a race. This was unbelievable. With 200 meters to go, I still thought I got second. And then I saw her dying and uh, to win like this. Oh, I didn't know that I'm in good shape, but Anna van der Breg is also a very good bicycle cyclist. So. It was a really uh, tough, uh, yeah, tough ride, but beautiful. To see from the very start how the girls just dug so incredibly deep. I mean, Clara and Lotto were incredible in the beginning, just to cover every attack. Just the two of them, almost um, single-handedly doing that, and then Lotto to actually get into the breakaway, um, and then Sile just to have the courage to go on, on the second to last climb. It was super, super impressive. And, you know, she really had the other girls scrambling. I mean, Annemiek didn't want to chase, and Anna didn't want to chase, and there was a point where I thought, well, she's going to ride away with this. So um, that was really special to see. And um, and then, yeah, just unfortunately, I didn't have the legs to, to reward um, Sile's efforts with a win, but I think the podium is a great result, and Sile to finish fourth and get rewarded for the climbing on the day is, is really great. And yeah, I mean, as I say over and over and over again, you know, the big focus of our team is to, um, to focus on development and of course winning is great but the most important thing is to see how the girls grow in, in character and become stronger women and I think that's very evident um, in Celia's performance how it's improved from last year to this year and that's very rewarding. I'm just very in general, general very proud of it was a super good showcase for women cycling and a way to promote women cycling uh, to have it everywhere live on television and then have such an exciting race exciting final that's that's the best way um, I like to talk with my legs and I don't like to be negative about oh we're not on television we are now today on television and I'm very proud that, uh, that we took this opportunity and have a super good exciting race and now to a rainy Glasgow and the European Championships the women raced over 32.3 kilometers to decide the wearer of the European Champions jersey. In the time trial, Anna van der Breggen got started in similar conditions to 2017. Defending champion Ellen van Dijk was next to go. Trixie Warrack was having a good day. And Anna van der Breggen was catching riders out on the road. Orgy Cordon Rago of France set some good early time checks. The first leader out on the roads. But Ellen van Dijk was setting a rapid pace, while van der Breggen wasn't giving up. Trixie Warak finished in 42-48 to go top of the leaderboard.
but van der Breggen eclipsed that. Now it was time to wait. Van der Breggen had ridden the second part of the course superbly, and van Dyck had a race on her hands. In the finishing straight, overtaking Lisa Brenauer, she had to sprint to beat her teammate. She just managed it, retaining the European Championship title by a slender margin of just two seconds. And van der Breggen showed her emotion as she was just beaten into second place. defends her European title. Her teammate Van der Breggen finishes second. Trixie Warrack in third. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after the break. Hello, I'm Ashley moman Pesio and welcome back to the Vox Women Cycling Show. The women's peloton lined up in Glasgow for the European Road Championships. Nine laps of a 14.4 kilometer course lay ahead with 130 kilometers the total for the race. The British team were active in the early stages and young rider Sophie Wright was particularly keen to attack. Four of the riders in the early break, including Lucinda Brand, decided not to continue, leaving Wright on her own. And in front of her home crowd, Wright built her advantage. The youngster has just signed for Cervelo Bigler in 2019. With 40k to go, the chase behind started to hot up. And the Dutch started to get very active. Flirta Mackay launched an attack from the peloton. And with that, Wright was caught with 36k to go. A brave effort on home roads for the 19-year-old. With 20 kilometers to go, Anna van der Breggen and Aliso Longoborghini attacked and began to work well together. On the fearsome Montrose climb, Danny Rowe also launched her own attack to try and bridge the gap. The Great Britain team leader managed to make contact with Van der Breggen and Longo Borghini. Inside the final 10 kilometers, Van der Breggen and Elisa Longoborghini kicked again. But with one kilometer to go, it all came back together, with Cordon Rago of France leading out the peloton down the finishing straight. It was a fiercely contested bunch sprint, but in the end, Marta Bastinelli of Italy came over the line first. Elena Cecchini, finishing fourth, celebrated with her teammate. Mariana Vos sprinted for second for the Netherlands. Lisa Brenauer added to her European title on the track with a bronze. Cecchini finished in fourth place. Danny Rowe in tenth. Now, from one side of the pond to the other, we chatted to Kristen Armstrong about her role in USA Cycling. 
So I recently took on a job at USC Cycling as the High Performance Director for the Federation. I oversee all athletes over all disciplines that are we consider in USC Cycling have met a criteria point where they would be potentially tied to what we would think of a medal potential in Tokyo. Figuring out where their gaps are, this is a position that wasn't in existence when I was racing. So it was always a dream of mine to have those gaps filled and those are the gaps that I always had to fill on my own. One of the most difficult things around high performance and it happens in business as well is the female voice. We have a hard time vocalizing how we really feel. I teach my riders that I coach, yes the mechanic might make a recommendation for how much air should be in your tires. However, why don't we learn how to figure that out so that when you wake up for race day and it's raining, you can go to your mechanic and say, excuse me, I would really like to have this much air pressure in my tire. It's just a role reversal. When people hire you, when you have a certain skill set, you have to realize and you have to utilize that skill set. The biggest detriment is when you join the industry or you're part of the industry and you don't use your voice and you don't have confidence. You have to contribute because we need more women, we need the voice, and we're doers. And I think that um, that's what our sport needs right now. As an athlete, it's really hard to train and do your best, but also get in the weeds of trying to grow our sport. And so I always question and wonder, how do we find time and how do we find that group that's gonna move these ideas and this voice forward? Because you can't be competitive and do this at the same time. So we need just as much passion on the other side of things working in the industry. Back in the UK, the women's road scene is developing fast. We take a look at the series so far. The first round of the series was the Lincoln Grand Prix, featuring the fearsome Michael Gate climb. Hannah Payton of Trek Drops attacked early. She enjoyed a slender lead before it all came back together once again. The pace was hot on the final lap, with Bex Durrell of Story Racing setting the pace. And on the final ascent of Michael Gate, Durrell kicked once again to take victory on home soil. Anna Henderson finished second for cycle team on form, Nikki Juniper in third. The second round was the Sickle Classic, a race which tests the riders both on and off-road, including tough gravel sections. With 4K to go, Sophie Wright attacks for Torelli brother. And despite crashing within the final few kilometers, Nia Evans uses her track prowess to sprint to the line and overtake Wright to win the Sickle Classic. The next round of the series was the Alexandra Tour of the Reservoir, a two-day stage race. Stage one, 105.4 kilometers and an early break established. Sarah Storey, Emma Cockcroft and Charmaine Porter. The battle was on between Cockcroft and Storey, but it was Great Britain's greatest ever Paralympian who took the win, Nikki Juniper in third. Stage two saw the peloton race 121.8 kilometers. The going was tough for the stage race leader, Sarah Storey. Out in front, Sophie Wright launched an attack. And the peloton could not stick with the pace she had set. She soloed to the line, clinching the victory in stage two and the win overall. The 
fourth round, the Otley Grand Prix, a race well supported in a county which loves its cycling. Team Breeze were on the attack with Megan Barker going out in front solo. She was soon caught thanks to the efforts of Story Racing before her teammate Rona Callender attacked. Mel Lowther of Story Racing tried to bridge the gap to the Team Breeze rider. And the duo began to work well together. In the final sprint in front of huge crowds, Rona Callender took the win. Stockton was the venue for the fifth round of the National Women's Road Series. Rona Callender once again out in front with EJ Harris on her wheel. But the duo was soon caught and reeled back in. Team Bree setting up the newly crowned national road race champion Jess Roberts for the sprint. With the pack ever diminishing, Jess Roberts unleashed her sprint. She took it easily and had time to raise her hands in the air over the line. Megan Barker finished second, Anna Henderson in third. The Barnsley Town Centre races was the penultimate round of the series with Sophie Wright in the series leader's jersey. An early breakaway was established with Anna Henderson, Joe Tindley and EJ Harris up the road. It was a tight and technical circuit, and Anna Henderson was attacking the corners. But she skidded out on a greasy corner, forcing EJ Harris into the barriers as well. Joe Tindley stole a march into the final lap. Anna Henderson was chasing hard. EJ Harris had the advantage in the final corner and once again fell victim to the greasy surface. Now it was a sprint between Henderson and Tindley. But Anna Henderson's power proved too much and she took her first win of the series. And with that, Sophie Wright has won the National Women's Road Series with an advantage of 31 points over Anna Henderson in second, Nikki Juniper in third. Well, that's all we've got time for this month, but join us again next time for more from the world of women's cycling. It's Annette Edmondson here. Thank you for watching the Vox Women's Cycling Show.